Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and look at this little beauty here. Bought it from eBay, not working. And it's a little Roberts radio. The model of this one is, what is the model? R RFM3. This thing is just lovely. Looks a bit sorry for itself right now, but hopefully by the end we can have it looking nice again. So I'll just flash up the eBay listing. It wasn't particularly cheap, it's just that I need a faulty one. Now, as you can see already, you can tell that it's just good quality. Roberts made very high quality radios back in the day, and they've got the Royal Warrant on them as well because they supplied the Queen. So if it's good enough for the Queen, it's just about good enough for my mate Vince. Also, what's nice is we've got the FM aerial here, and for the medium wave and long wave, you can see we have this little turn thing here so we can swivel it to get a good reception. It's not spinning nice just because it's on the rubber mat. But uh, yeah, a very nice quality item here. So let's uh, show you it not working. So you can see if I turn it on here, there's nothing happening. Let's just see what's the state of play at the bottom. I mean, even stuff like this, look, you do this here and that just lifts up and uh, exposes the battery in the inside. So what does it say here? So it has been in use quite recently, 2013. This radio is from the 1980s, but it sort of takes this design, I'd say, from quite a bit before that. Looks more 60s to me. But Roberts have been making radio since the 1930s. Right, let's just check the voltage on this battery here. Right, that battery is completely and utterly dead. Yeah, nothing in that battery whatsoever. These should be nine volts. Now I do have one. Here it is, slightly worryingly. Ooh, look at that. That's not good, is it? The lid's come off. This is brand new as well. Right, okay. Well, let's see if we've got voltage in it. Which we have 10 volts, so it's a nine volt battery, so that's full. I'm just lifting it up a bit, making sure it doesn't disconnect. Yeah, that's fine. It's just the plastic that's gone a bit loose. Battery terminals here look perfect. Again, everything just looks high quality. And this is a very small, nice portable radio, so you can see it fits in there nice. But let's see now, is anything gonna happen? No, nothing's happening. So, let's take it apart and see what's going on. So what's your thoughts? My thoughts are, I'm thinking, it's been in use quite recently, so it's an old radio, but yet we definitely know it was in use here, unless somebody just labelled up the battery uh, when they bought it, but I think it's unlikely. I'm thinking it does look quite grubby and dirty. I'm wondering if it's going to be as simple as the on and off switch not making a contact because we haven't got any life on it whatsoever. Either that or could it be the volume is set right the way down and it's not moving up, but I'm thinking it's more likely to be on and off switch. So let's see now if we can work out how this thing comes apart. Right, so we've got a screw here and here. This looks like it takes off the top bit. Is that just, okay. The, these things here just unhook the handle. This side unhooks, I don't want to, hold on, I don't want to damage it. I'm gonna pop that back on for the time being. Wow, that is stiff. There we go. I don't think this has ever been apart before. There we go, right. Handle is off. Let's undo these two screws here and here. We could also put uh, nine volts in via here as well, an adapter. Oh, and the pin is negative, so center pin must be negative. Not sure what type of wood that is, it just looks lovely. I think, I've got a feeling this will clean up real nice. So I'm thinking in this era they would have still been made in the UK. And Roberts is still going strong today. I believe back in the day these were some of the best radios along with another company called Hacker. Now I wonder does the top just, does it push out? Oh, maybe we have to undo the aerial here. That was loose.
Excellent. Everything just looks quality. Now, what's keeping this in? It's starting to come out there, isn't it? It's definitely coming out there, but this side's not. Is it just stuck from grime, though? So it comes off from that seal here. So let me just try to pry it a little bit here. Definitely hasn't been apart before. Yes, it's coming, listen. There you go. It was just all this horrible grime on it. There you go. Yes. Come on. Right, so that just clips onto the aerial there. Is it gonna come out anymore? What's keeping this in? Uh, oh, here, let's undo this here because this is putting strain on these wires. So let's undo these two screws. That's out. There we go, excellent. Right, now it's just a speaker in, and the speaker has little spade terminals down here. So we can actually completely take it out. Uh, I'm just gonna take a quick picture of this, just so I know where the blue and the black wire goes. I'm taking a couple of pictures of the area as well. So let's just take these off here. Perfect, we are now free. So that is it there. You can actually see it is a solid piece of wood on both sides. This isn't no veneer, this is a proper nice bit of wood. And it looks like it's leather bound, whether it's real or not, I'm not too sure. But that is lovely. Well, I mean, style-wise, it depends on your taste, but I think that just looks beautiful. Okay, now, on and off switch is this one here. Let's see if we have continuity on it. So how does it work? Uh, not too sure. We've got six contacts on it. Let's just go on to continuity here. So you can hear when my meter beeps, it means it's together. Let's see, are these all together here? That's going off there. Oh, interesting. Oh, here we go, hold on, wait. Oh, it's very hit and miss, isn't it? Right, that's on. Off. On. Well, that says to me that switch is working. It does look like there's corrosion or something here, though, doesn't it? Look at that. Let's just quickly plug it in now. Maybe that was enough to fix it. Oh, no speaker on it, hold on. Hold on. I reckon that might have fixed it, you know, because the uh, the multimeter wasn't going off when I did that. It was a bit hit and miss, wasn't it? No. Oh, yes, there we go. It went off for a second there. It's this, listen. It's dirt in the contact here, dirty switch. Okay, we had a bit of life, it's not doing it again now, but I think we just need to clean that switch out. Let's take it apart and see if we can see the inside because we've definitely got corrosion on that bit there. Now normally I'd be a bit annoyed if it was just a faulty switch, but in this case I'd be pleased because it needs such a clean up anyway. It'd be, uh, it'd be quite satisfying just to see the difference between it looking disgusting and looking nice. Right, how is this gonna come undone? It looks like we have... Oh, look, they're only soldered on that side there. So it's this side here which is the contacts, look. 
No solder here, just here, one, two, three. So we should be able to work out which ones do what. So it's this side here. Yeah, listen. See there? There, now it's working. But not properly. Now, anything between here and here? No, anything between here and here? No, I think it must be between these two. Bad switch. Right, let's see if we can do it so it's working all the time. Right, while I'm struggling to take this switch off, let's give a, a shout out to the sponsors of this video. And that is the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month that consists of Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Mediasteamer.com, Rob Hughes, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, and Daniel Hyams. So thank you guys. Okay, here we have it. So what have we done now? We've done that there. So will that just lift up from here? Not sure. Do we have to unsolder the whole thing? I mean, I could probably just clean it with IPA and it might work. I just kind of wanted to see if it was possible to see the inside of it. But in doing that, I might end up breaking it. So it's probably best that I maybe stop right now. Yeah, do you know there's some kind of glue here? Uh, yeah, there's, there's like this reddish glue which is holding these in here. Right, I think that would be a silly idea if I persevered with that. So let's just flood it with IPA, keep doing this, try to get the dirt out of it. Even up here, the top, that top layer of the spring has got uh, corroded there. You see in here? So this has definitely had some kind of liquid damage. There, look at that. Quite a clever mechanism how that works. So it forces it up that way and in. Then it goes that way. So it's the moulding telling that pin where to go, this plastic moulding. Yeah. Okay, let's get the IPA out and give this all a really, really good clean. Here we have it, the 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. It's becoming a bit of a phrase of mine now. I'm just going to flood it in here to begin with. And then after all this, we can try and put some deoxit in it because I think this would be the ideal opportunity for the deoxit. Do you know what? It's probably a good idea while I'm here to uh, clean the others as well. And the I don't think I'm going to do the tuning because that's just turning that one there. But I'm definitely going to do the volume here because I could imagine but uh, if I didn't, it would be very crackly. Whether any of that is gonna work its way in or not is debatable. All right, that's dried quite a bit, but it's still probably gonna be quite wet on the inside. Let's see now if it's gonna work consistently. Off, on, off, on. Well, it seems to be okay now, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna get the deoxid and put that in there now. All 
Right, so I've just flooded that area with this stuff here. And I'm just gonna keep working it into the hole. This is where the spray version, the aerosol version would be better because it would force its way down in here. While really I'm just hoping that gravity will pull this in. Right, I'll keep just wiping that in there until uh, it all either evaporates off or gets pushed into the holes. And uh, in the meantime, I might as well start cleaning this up because I think it's probably gonna be working fine. Let's give it all a nice good clean, then we can put it back together at the end and test it all. If there's something else not working, then we can worry about that then. So I'm just gonna be using these Dettol wipes here. Yeah, I can see, is this, that might be water corrosion there as well, in this area. Maybe it was, I don't know, it's above that one though, isn't it? But maybe it's seeped through onto there. Yeah, that looks like the aluminium's corroded there. Or had a reaction. Look how clean that's gonna come up. Oh, these come off. Make it even easier for cleaning. Excellent. Oh, and that's like a rubber grommet up here. Yes, that's for the aerial. There's sand is coming out of it. Right, if I had one, I would actually replace that one, but I'm not gonna have it. I've got some electrical ones for electrical back boxes, but they're gonna be too big. Oh, this isn't aluminium, it's a little chrome plastic strip. This reminds me of the Mini, the wheel trims that went around the, the Mini car years ago. Yeah, it's just like plastic with chrome finish on the inside. a sesame seed. Hmm. Oh, this even comes out. Look at that. Oh, yes, perfect. That allows me now to clean in here. Ah, now that isn't, that's kind of, uh, I think that's stained, like sun damage. Oh, look, I'm glad that comes off now. You can really get this apart to clean it. It's a lovely device. Right, okay, well, you see what I'm gonna be doing here. It's gonna take a long, long time to clean. Let's just give a, a quick go on here. Actually, just on camera, let's see if that comes up nice there. Oh, that's going to clean up lovely. And look at the royal warrant there. Let's see what that says. Let's zoom in on that. By appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, radio manufacturers Roberts Radio Co. Limited. Roberts Radio Company Limited. Lovely. Right, let's uh, have a quick go on this here, see how this is going to come up. Do 
you know, I think this might be leather. Or is it? Maybe it's vinyl, not sure. Well, I think if I keep going over that, I think it will come up clean. Because already I can see it's starting to come out of the grain. And you can see on here, and that's of course I'm taking the dye out of it, which is uh, which is possible. Right, I think that's going to come up good. Let's just have a little go on what's happening at the uh, the wood at the side here. Maybe this needs sanding back and then revarnishing. Again, I think a lot of it is ground in dirt. Oh, look at that! It's already starting to come up lovely. So as you can imagine, I've got plenty to keep me busy here. Look at that. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is just kind of showing you a few little shots with a little bit of music and uh, hopefully bit by bit it will be nice and clean, but I'm thinking it's probably going to take me about an hour or so to clean all this. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. That is quality. So can you see these little holes here? There's a little ball bear in here. And look, it flicks in. So when you turn the aerial, it goes nicely into position. Never seen that before. Oh, that is nice. Just going to knock that pin back through because it seems to have been pushed through. Also, that clicks into position as well. That is lovely. So the aerial is quite bananaed, so I'm just gonna have to try and bend that back into place. I'm just cleaning up this bit here and I realise that this has actually come out from here. So this should be in this little bit. There we go. I think I'm going to have to pop a little bit of hot glue on that because otherwise that's just going to come out again and that was glued originally. In fact it looks melted there. Let's burn some of this and put a dollop on there. The reason I use this a lot of people think is because I can't afford a hot glue gun it's 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 not it's just you can get up to a much higher temperature here maybe if you bought a real professional glue gun it will go up to a high temperature but i've got this at 480 degrees celsius and apparently when you really heat up this stuff the bonds a lot better i 
I'm just going to put some there and also on there. Okay. And it's incredibly quick as well. I'm just going to put these in the sink with a toothbrush and get them nice and clean. Now on this bit here, you can see how discolored it is and it's going to be visible through here, the discoloration. So what I've done is, I've just, uh, it's just been glued down here. I've taken it off. I'm going to try to clean away the glue and then stick the side that was originally there down here with the glue and then hopefully when you look through it, it will be nice and, uh, nice and clean. Right, this is not really working and what I'm wondering is, it's only, as far as I can see, just so it's not shining down, looking down on this uh, metal here, which could, over the years, get discoloured. I'm going to get some sandpaper and see if I can get away this staining from it. I mean, I suppose retro brighting would get rid of it, but that's going to take a long time for me to do, and I haven't got any peroxide or anything. So I'm going to see if sandpaper will get rid of the top layer of this to get to the plastic at the bottom, because what's happening here is I'm just kind of scraping it away and it's starting to go shiny, so it's not leaving a very nice finish. Well, that side's not really making any difference, but I've just rubbed it against this side, and look, it's got this like layer on it. So that's what was uh, causing the shine. So I should be able to get rid of this layer, and that will hopefully give me a, a better finish underneath. Still going to be discoloured though. So here we have it, I sanded it back. Now I know that still looks awful, but compared to that side, it looks a lot better. And I think when it's all back together, I can't scrape it anymore because I'm going through the paint, you see. But I think when it's like that, that's gonna look better than, for example, that. Well, I know it's gonna look better, it looks better already. I think that looked fine when it's on. So I now need to just use some double-sided tape to put this back onto here. Actually, before I forget, these need to be bent back over. Well, I'm really struggling to get the in-ground dirt from the uh, from this leather or vinyl. It's just all in the creases. So I'm going to use some sugar soap, and then hopefully that will work. This hasn't been used in a long time. I think it's got clogged up. Anyway, it's coming out. I can wash it all down with water once it's clean. Now I'm slowly starting to get there. It's starting to look a lot cleaner now. I've been looking online at pictures and this looks like it, the box uh, from the same one and this is obviously brand new here. And can you see it's got chrome all the way around the edge here? Because I've had a look and there does look to be a slight bit of chrome there and chrome there. So I'm gonna see if I've got silver paint like a silver paint pen, and just to see if I can paint around the edge just to finish that bit off. Here it goes, steady hand time. So I've got these little uh, acrylic paint pens here. Let's just see how thick it's gonna come out. Pretty thick. I 
That was a nice one, wasn't it? Ooh! Not so good. Need something to rest my hand on so I can rub it along, you see. No, no. Actually, that's all right. That's all right. Now I can't do this inside bit because that's actually under the plastic. Okay, a little bit's gone under there, but that's fine. I'll wait until that dries and then I'll wipe that off. Brilliant. Right, that's that bit done. And I just need to get a tiny, tiny bit of black paint on these bits here. Looking good. All right, now I've got to decide what I'm doing on the side here because they've gone uh, they've gone very faded now that I've taken all the dirt out of it. I think I'm going to put some clear satin varnish on that if I've got it. If not, it will have to be gloss, but I prefer to have a dull finish on there. Well, I've had a good look everywhere. This is the only varnish that I can find, so this is gloss, but it is clear. Who knows, gloss might be nice, and this is for interior, interior wood and furniture, so this is gonna be fine. Quick dry, touch dry in only 20 minutes, so hopefully I might be able to get a couple of coats on it. It's all frothy just because I've been shaking it up. Now I'm gonna keep it well away from this bit here because the, the paint on this comes off really easy. Even just using the little wet wipe, the paint was starting to come off. Now it is really starting to come together now. Look at it, it is looking lovely. So I'm gonna put it back together. I can always add a bit more varnish when it's back together, but I think I'm gonna get away with it as it is now. I think it looks lovely. I'm really happy with the silver round there as well. It just seems such good quality. Right, let's get it all back together and see if it's all working.
Look at that. Right, I'll do a nice close up in a little while. I'm just gonna put the battery in, put the bottom on, and then see if it's all working. Oh, look at it. It looks amazing. It really does just look lovely. Oh, this, I don't know what it is about it. It just screams quality. It really, really does. From the aerial to the way it swivels, everything about it. Watch this aerial now. So I'm doing this one-handed, but look. Watch this, watch it click into place. Boom. Round this way. Yeah, and just, just, oh, I don't know. It's so, so, so nice. Even the top of the aerial is nice. And it's working fine. I can't find any fault with it whatsoever. All the bands work. I've got it on FM at the moment. Uh, it's YouTube. I can't play you anything. Let's see if I can get some talking. But I've been listening to it and it sounds perfect. Yeah. Loads of volume. Loads of volume. Off. On. Let's move that quickly before I get done. Partnersinsupport.org. There we go. And have a look here. You see the. Uh, slow it down. The uh, the display underneath there. It looks lovely. It's got like a nice blue tone to it. It just looks fantastic. I'm so happy with it. And you can see the varnish in there. It looks nice. Everything about it looks good. And really, there's very little wrong with it. A tiny little chip taken out of the underneath of the paint there. Uh, a tiny little bash just down here, but we're talking, we're talking tiny, tiny, tiny things. Also, that there isn't fantastic, but yet the way the silver goes around the top, really happy with how that's come out. Look how professional it looks, and I got it away from underneath as well. Yeah, and the underneath of it, everything about this thing just screams quality. It's really nice. I think it is one of my favourite items. I absolutely love it. Now I've been looking at the Roberts website and there is, or just on Amazon, and there is one that looks very similar to this that you can buy new nowadays. Obviously it's not going to have the charm of this, but it's still pretty good. Let me show it to you. Here we are on the MacBook Air, still working perfectly. Quite a few weeks later now, I'm waiting for this thing to die, but it's just still, still going good. So here it is here, look at it, and it's got the wood at the side. Let me just go through the pictures here. It's a very styly looking radio. Obviously it's DAB, the insides are gonna be all new, they're not gonna be anything like the insides of this one here, but it's still a nice looking one, 88 pounds, not cheap, but uh, it does look nice, and they also do another model here. Look at this one, it looks slightly bigger, it's got two speakers in, I haven't looked at the uh, I haven't looked at the specification or anything, but isn't that amazing? So if you look at that one, yes, the top looks different, but you can definitely see that the, it's taken all its styling from this one here. So look at that one, look at this one, look at that one. I mean, for me, I prefer this one just because it's the real thing, but uh, it's still nice knowing that the design's still going strong today. So overall, I am very, very, very pleased. Just get the uh, aerial down. And the handle, there we go. Look at it. Oh, dearie me. Well, that is it. Will I do more Roberts radios? Not too sure. I've done the boom box now and I've done this one here. I might look into a hacker radio to see what they look like. So uh, yeah, I'm not promising I won't do any more, but uh, I won't do any more in the near future anyway. So that is it. I'm going to line up my thumbnail now, make it all look nice, and I will see you very soon. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Take care.